seven organizations were awarded grant funding by the U.S. Embassy in Belize, totaling 1.6 million U.S. dollars. The funding was made available through the Central American Regional Security Initiative, CARSI, Economic Support Funds Program. A short ceremony was held today at the residence of U.S. Ambassador Carlos Moreno. Love News was present and Ippolito Novella reports. Since 2008, the U.S. Embassy in Belize has provided more than 35 million U.S. dollars in grant funding. This year, 1.6 million U.S. dollars was allocated to fund seven projects. According to the U.S. Ambassador to Belize, Carlos Moreno, these projects will focus on strengthening citizen security by creating jobs, increasing education opportunities, and constructing alternative activities in which at-risk youths can engage in. These are programs uh, directed uh, towards steering uh, young people away from gang participation, uh, violence, and crime uh, through education, uh, increased uh, job opportunities, and leadership opportunities, and entrepreneurship, in fact, so that they can learn to really uh, create uh, their own uh, businesses. We're looking forward to working with all of these uh, NGOs and helping uh, the youth, the at-risk youth in Belize, to steer them away from gang participation and crime. The grantees were asked to submit proposals that would engage young people between the ages of 14 and 25 who are considered at risk of falling prey to gang leaders. Each project seeks to attract the youth away from criminal life. This is exactly what the Toledo Institute for Development and Environment, TIDE, represented by Selim Mahong, seeks to do in certain Belize. Our project is twofold. It expands our existing freshwater cup, which is a program that TIDE has that integrates conservation with sports, football in particular. It's a program that we've had in the schools for almost 10 years where students ages 10 to 12 develop um, environmental projects at their schools or in their communities implement those and that qualifies them to play in a football competition at their school. So they get to play with um, schools nearby and they win their schools, win prizes, they get trophies, medals for, as, as recognition for participation. So this project expands the Freshwater Cup and it extends it to 30 schools. So it extends it to schools in, in rural Toledo um, so from 17 schools to 30 schools, so that's big for us. Phase two of this project is skills training for youths in the Toledo district. We realize that there are a number of youths in the district who are out of school and they're unemployed. And so the project will offer skills training, life skills training, um, numerous, numerous skills training such as carpentry, masonry, um, skills that prepare them for the tourism industry, among others. And, and the whole idea is for, the, for youths to enhance um, their skills so that they can be employed, meaningfully employed, and as a result, contribute to the development of Belize. Also receiving grant funding was the Love Foundation represented by Deborah Sewell. According to Sewell, Love Foundation has plans to target 150 at-risk young women in the next two years. The first part of the program, which is the first 90 days, is actually a therapeutic component. And then we move into them choosing a career path and us working with them to be, for them to be able to meet that career goal. So it takes them into either vocational, educational, entrepreneurship activities. So it's wide open and it's, it's their choice what they want to get into. We're not just plugging them into, into um, some, you know, some, um, some category that we think would best fit for them. They, choose, they get to choose after 90 days where they want to go. And so it includes apprenticeship as well. It includes on the job training. It's a two-year project and within those two years we're going to be working with 150 girls. What are the mechanisms that will be employed to select this youth? We're working closely with the Department of Youth Services. So we're going to be doing ongoing recruitment and we're recruiting in different areas. So we're going to be looking in, um, we've already been working in the Yabra area, Lake, Lake Independence, St. Martin's area. We're expanding now to um, communities known as Jungle, Gungulong. So we're going to be in those communities looking for those, um, for those young people who would be interested. So it's ongoing recruitment, underground recruitment with the staff from the Department of Youth Services. 
Ambassador Moreno says that these programs were chosen based on their track record and success. We want uh, programs that have an established uh, management uh, because in addition to writing a great proposal, uh, there's significant monitoring that uh, comes along with that. Both the grant writing aspect and the monitoring requires some, some skill. And uh, we at the government simply don't just give away money. Uh, we also look for metrics, that is, uh, results. So we do measure whether or not these programs are successful. And as you noted, uh, two of the programs today, uh, one for the uh, YMCA, and I forget the other one, uh, but were extensions. IT Vet uh, out of Stan Creek. They were initially uh, granted a significant sum for two years. We had some uh, remainder funds left over, and we decided to extend and make their two-year grant into a three-year grant. So success breeds success. Reporting for Love News, Hippolyta Novello.